Three, two, one. In front of you right now, I have five of the most extreme smartphones that money can buy. Each one with super specialized, highly advanced features that you've never seen before. So number five is the Duty S97 Pro, a device that I'm titling the Spy Phone, thanks to two very sneaky abilities it has. For starters, a laser that's not just for finally getting revenge on your feline companions, you can also use it to measure the distance to your target, which in this case is Josh, my camera guy. Some esteemed work you're doing there. I'm a filmer. See, when you fire a laser, you're basically firing a pulse of focused light. That light travels to the target and then reflects back off it. And because laser light specifically travels at a consistent speed throughout Earth's atmosphere, you can reliably use the time taken for that laser to return to measure distance. But it's not just that. Because this is also a smartphone and not just a tape measure, you can measure the distance horizontally, you can measure the distance vertically, and then this can use that to tell you the area of the wall. And if I also add in the depth measurement, it can tell me the volume of the room. But there's another ability. This is an underwater camera. I mean, technically any phone is an underwater camera. Some just only once. The point is, this phone has not just the protection to be able to withstand the depths, but at the same time, an underwater mode, which clarifies the image while you're under the water, but also allows you to control the entire camera app using the buttons. Because of course, capacitive touchscreens do not work in the water. Okay, so the phone is in the pool. It is recording using this underwater mode. I'm about to jump in and see what the footage looks like. Three, two, one. Well, that looks pretty dreadful. All right, so number four is the Unihertz Atom XL. XL feels like a bit of a stretch. It's the tiniest unit I've seen all year. But you're about to see how, at the same time, it is the most connected smartphone I've ever used. Yes, it even has its own external antenna. Okay, Josh, you start sprinting away now. This will make sense very shortly. See, the way that a normal cellular phone works is that, uh, let's say we're on a call and I say a word to you. My cellular phone uses its tiny little antennae to send out tiny little radio waves that are carrying that word. But because these waves are so small, they don't travel very far. And so I need to make sure that I'm near a cell tower that can pick up those waves, convert them to a signal, send that signal via cable to the closest cell tower to you, and then convert them back to tiny waves that your cellular phone can pick up. If either of us is not near one of those cell towers though, that chain breaks and you end up with one of these situations. But that is where this phone comes in, which has not just cellular calling capability, but also a walkie-talkie or two-way radio feature. And this means that it can use its larger antennae on top to send out larger radio waves, which, because they're larger, can travel further and thus don't need to go via cell towers and be compressed. They can just go directly from me to you. So providing that you're in about a 10 kilometer radius of the person you're calling, this should mean more reliable, better quality, and more importantly, free calls without even needing a SIM card. And to test that theory, I actually bought two of these phones. Josh has the other one, and I'm hoping at this point that he is thousands of meters away. So let's try a normal phone call first. Hey Josh. Hello. Where did you get to? Uh, I am about a kilometer away in the uh, woods somewhere. In the woods somewhere. Okay, how would you rate the quality of this call? Uh, a pretty solid seven out of 10, just like your mum. So, <laughs> and now let's try a two-way radio call. All I need to do is to make sure I'm on the same frequency as him and I should be able to talk. Hey Josh, how does this sound? Hello, it sounds extremely good. It actually sounds a lot more full and less compressed and there's less wind noise through this one, surprisingly. Whoa. That's a glowing review. Hey Josh, uh, do you want to head back now? Over and out. I feel like I'm in a movie. <laughs> this, is, this is great. All right, now we're taking it up another notch. This phone right here, the AGM Glory Pro, breaks not one, but two records. Look at this thing, what a beast. The first record being its speaker. The product description is pretty amusing. It says, you will have no chance to ignore any phone calls, but you should warn your friends in advance, else they may think it as an earthquake alarm. I'm really excited about this one, actually, because normal phone speakers are practically useless when it comes to outdoor environments. Let's see if this one lives up to its claims. So this is playing from my iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is about as loud as most phones get. And this is playing off the AGM Glory, which they're saying is rated at 110 decibels, with the equivalent to being in the audience at a loud orchestra. Not gonna lie, that is shockingly effective. Unlike the skate. 
But it ain't just the speaker. The AGM Glory Pro also has the best night vision of any smartphone. So for starters, one of its cameras is a thermal camera, which is basically a sensor that's geared towards picking up infrared light, which is just naturally given off by hot objects. So we're in pitch black here, right? There's no one around. Not according to this phone, which apparently has two times the resolution and half the reaction time of any other thermal camera on a phone. But to be fair, it still looks pretty abstract to me. But then it goes a step further, because let's say what you wanted to see wasn't a human subject. Let's say you wanted to see your basketball net, for example. Then the thermal camera isn't going to cut it. You need an active IR mode. So there's two lights here that basically shoot out invisible infrared light to, to cover the area in front of you. And then a completely separate camera that's optimized to be able to pick up that light and convert it into a digital image that our eyes can understand. This is insane. I'm literally, I'm walking around with my iPhone 13 Pro Max in one hand and the Glory Pro in the other. And you can see how dark it is, right? And yet because it's picking up infrared light, it can practically ignore that darkness. But the cherry on top is that if neither of those two modes cut it, then the Glory Pro also has, I think this is so cool, world's strongest flashlight built into it. And if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be glorious. Okay, we've had extreme speakers, we've had extreme communications, we've had extreme cameras. What's left? Well, the Yukitel WP15 is the most extreme battery you can get on a smartphone. So for perspective, in 2022, I would consider 4,000 milliamp hours to be a solid capacity, 5,000 milliamp hours to be a very strong capacity, 6,000 milliamp hours to be exceptional, and then anything above that doesn't exist in the mainstream market. This phone has a 15,600 milliamp hour battery, and we're gonna test it. So on this table right now, we've got the Yukitel WP15 against the very latest top of the line Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. They're both at 100%, so I'm gonna unplug them at the same time and then see how much battery each one loses after one hour of continuous screen on time. I wouldn't say I'm optimistic about Yukitel's efficiency. I can't imagine they've put particular care into picking super energy efficient components and optimizing the software, but through the sheer brute force of 15,600 milliamp hours, it does in fact win by a fair margin. I'm just trying to wrap my head around how long this could potentially last if you're actually careful with the battery. And the extra benefit to this monumental sized cell is that you can also plug this phone into other phones and use it as a power bank. I'm not really recommending that you buy any of these phones I'm showing you. They're extremely specialist, but I can't deny it is cool. But what you've seen so far is nothing compared to number one. It's one thing to be able to stalk someone from a distance or see them in the dark. It is a totally different ball game to be able to stop a bullet. I'm seeing this phone for the first time alongside you. I have absolutely no idea what it looks like. I just literally got sent an email by Caviar, the company who takes expensive things and makes them 10 times more expensive, asking me which gun I wanted to shoot it with so they could design it in such a way that it could withstand that. And there were no limits on this. The implication was that whatever gun I picked, they would be able to accommodate for. So just before we get a bit trigger happy, we should probably have a look what we're working with. So this is a classic caviar box right here, just black leather everywhere. I feel like a lot of the time I do these unboxings, I have like at least an idea of what the phone might look like. I am, I'm going in completely blind here. Three, two, one. Ooh, that is unexpectedly spicy. You know when I was first told that like, we were gonna have a bulletproof phone, in my mind it was gonna be like 50 centimeters of metal on the back, but that actually almost looks stealthy. <laughs> okay, let's have a quick look what else we get. International Certificate of Ownership, which puts the name of this phone as the Caviar iPhone 13 Pro Max Stealth Titanium Edition. That's a mouthful. And then three more boxes. So the first one is a USB-C to lightning cable. The second one is just a standard Apple adapter. And then the third one is always interesting because every now and again, Caviar will make like a, a custom pair of earphones to go with a phone. Oh, AirPods. It's all about the phone. This is so cool. Apparently the inspiration for this phone actually came about because of the news stories showing how past iPhones with their strong metal bodies had previously saved the lives of journalists and soldiers by accidentally stopping shrapnel in its tracks. Oh, I really, really like it. Most phones I've had from Caviar are far too obnoxious to actually carry with you. This one I could see myself using. And they've made the back of the phone titanium, which makes a lot of sense because it has the strength of steel, but is significantly lighter. Can we just not shoot it? 
Okay, so just to give you context, the gun I chose, because I don't actually have a gun license, is the most powerful air rifle I could get within the legal limit. So this gun right here can shoot lead pellets at up to 800 feet per second. So, should cause some damage. And just to test how much damage, I've got a test phone from our good friends at Wish.com. Okay, our Wish.com phone is in place. Milo, let's go inside, come on. I've actually been training with this gun to make sure I don't screw this up. It goes nothing. Three, two, one. Oh my God. I did not realize how powerful this thing is. Look at it. This one bullet has managed to crack through the entire back layer and make its way all the way through to the front. Safe to say it's uh, it's not gonna turn on now. Okay, time for the iPhone. I'm, I'm probably more scared than I've been in my entire life. Watch how this bullet comes back and hits me. Okay. Oh, reload. Jeez. Put the pellet in the gun and now snap it shut. Take aim. Let's do this thing. Three, two, one. No! I hit it dead on in the middle and there's not even a mark. When I started practicing with this gun and I was watching as like one bullet was tearing through three tables stacked on top of each other, I thought there is no way on the planet that this phone that's barely thicker than a normal iPhone was gonna survive, but it did. To check out my last two ridiculous smartphone unboxings, I'm gonna leave them both linked up here. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss and I'll catch you in the next one.